we speaking of expenses? Um, you know, insurance. You know. Yes. Yeah. So I'll, I'll just I'll just start off real quick. I had a <laughs> I firm say, um, for E and O, he said. Uh, this is what I would do for E&O. E&O if, for, for those people who don't know what E&O insurance is, it's, it's errors and emissions insurance. It's basically professional liability. That's and it's supposed to cover you. Yeah, it's supposed to cover you for negligence, right? So if in a claim, if you could be proven that you were negligent, you could be liable, right? So E&O insurance covers you for that up to however million, millions of dollars or whatever it is. So if you are working for a company that pays W-2, you are not – you don't need to buy E&O insurance because you will be covered under their umbrella E&O policy, right? And nine times out of 10, um, negligence is a, is a pretty hard thing to prove, right? Um, they can try it, I guess, but it's there's a I think there's a pretty high standard for it. Um, if you are 1099, I would say maybe. If you are working directly for a carrier, like if you're an adjuster and if you, get, if you can – Develop a relationship directly with the carrier. There's a lot of carriers out there that don't work through IA firms. They will only hire independents. Like they'll say, "Hey, Matt, I got some things for you." Right? And so you just work with the guy at the the, the insurance company's office. 100% absolutely get an E and O insurance to protect yourself. Right? And this kind of this kind of sort of fades a little bit into the LLC thing a little bit because LLC is supposed to limited liability corporation, supposed to protect you. Um, protect your personal stuff if you happen to get taken and drag, drug into court. Generally speaking, if you work for a big IA firm like Pilot, um, they've got, I mean, they've got an army of attorneys and they're going to cover you with E&O insurance as well. And again, I, like like Jeremy, I mean, we've handled thousands and thousands and thousands of claims. I've never gone to court once, so I, I don't. Know, I know a lot of people who have, but I don't know if it's just a luck of the draw or what. But it just hasn't. It's never come up for me. Um, I don't know. So, yeah, I'll just leave it at that. Anybody else want to tackle that one? Like, I want to really hear what James has to say since he sold it. I want to hear what James yeah. has to say about eating on shirts. Uh, <laughs> I don't have it. You know, um, you know, insurance, you know, it's, it's like any other insurance. You know, it's it's um, nobody wants it until you need it, you know, Um if if you never have to use it, you feel like you wasted your money. But if you had to use it one time, it's worth every dime you spent. So yeah, exactly. you know, take that. What's that? Exactly. Yeah. So I mean, I yeah, depending on what you're doing. Again, you know, if you're going to do cat, most cat firms now are going to make you an employee when you're out in the field. Okay, and so you're going to be covered. Doing dailies, you know, yeah, I would I would definitely say I would get it. Um, even though I don't have it, um, then that's just, I'm a big risk taker. You know, I like to live dangerously and, uh, it's my middle name, but, uh, that's, your middle uh, name was Bubba. Yeah, well, that's it. Um, <laughs> Bubba but that's danger. just me. That's just, I mean, that's just, but you know, it, it's just, what's your appetite for risk and how confident are you that you're in, a, in an environment? I mean, you, also depends on where you work. There's certain areas that you work in that are more litigious than others. Um, so yeah. if you're in an area that just likes to sue everybody, um, and I'm going to give an example like New York, New Jersey, uh, where everybody's suing everybody, um, working in a Dallas Fort Worth area is also an area where people sue each other a lot. Um, you know, I work Collin County quite a bit and Collin County in the Dallas Fort Worth area is, uh, you, you don't see a lot of that going on. So, you know, this depends on where you're at and I, I'm very picky on the claims I take that, that limits my exposure to that. And I have been known on a couple of occasions that whenever I've called an insured and the insured is very combative and all I'm trying to do is set an appointment, um, I have actually rejected the claim because right. I've done I could tell that was a lawsuit coming and I don't get paid to sit in a courtroom. Absolutely. So, so take that for what it's worth. You know, insurance, it's a personal choice and it just depends on what your appetite is for risk. Well, I'll, so, I'll yeah. give you I'll give you something on that, James. You do get paid to sit in a courtroom if uh, if you angle it that way. I um I well, have yeah, you're a professional witness. Well, no, even even if you're just being deposed, you can get paid for it. So if um, whether it's by the adversary or if it's by the company you work with, you will actually make more money if it's directly from the adversary. Um, most, um, at least from what I've ex been exposed to 
if um, if if you're going to a courtroom based on at the request of a company that you worked with, a IA company, you might get paid like a T&E rate based on their fee schedule. But if you go on behalf of the adversary, you can uh, unless you're being subpoenaed um, or thing or I, I might be wrong here, but unless it's like a different situation, you can pretty much dictate what your be what you would be willing to accept as an hourly rate. So right now I have not been to, to go to the question is, is ENO worth it? All right. So I have never I, I've been paying ENO for a long time. For less of that, I've been paying for workers' comp insurance and paying for general liability insurance. I have my company set, my claims company set up as an S corp. So I draw a paycheck. I just draw a check. All right, draw a check for my own company. Everything else is kept in the business account. So um, I have. Let me get. Let me get where I'm at. So. I lost where I was at. Shoot. Okay, next. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, um, so I've never actually used my insurance. Okay. Now I currently have right now four depositions, all based off of Irma. I have four des- des- uh, depositions scheduled between next month and uh, the following. None of those depositions that I have have any impact on the ENO insurance that I have there. It's all the, everything is being covered by the independent insurance company. And that's going to be the case most of the time, but there is a benefit to having at least, you know, insurance, at least for me in terms of the marketability of it, being able to say that you carry ENO insurance and putting that somewhere on your resume where it's visible where the person that's reading your resume can can actually see that you do carry insurance that speaks volumes. Never mind the fact that some adjustment companies out there will actually dock you uh, money per month or, or usually per file if you don't carry your own E and O insurance. I know some yeah, companies true, dock you like it really does that. Yeah, like five. Like it's something five like bucks. I mean, just imagine it. Yeah, five bucks. Which doesn't sound like much, right? Five bucks, like who cares? But if that's with a company that you get daily claims from and you get out of a month, 30 daily claims from, you're getting 30, you use 30, what is that? $35, that's $150 a month. I don't know how much you guys, and James, I don't know how much you've, if you know like the cost. Close to a year. Yeah, not that much, right? So you're paying 150 bucks. So you can get that much less just by carrying your own. And for the fact that you're able to go in front of an adjusting co- adjustment company and say, hey, listen, I've got you know insurance. I've not only got you know insurance, I've got general liability insurance. I've got, I, I've got workers, I'm fully insured. I've got that right on my resume right now that I'm fully insured. That not only shows, that, that not only gives you the, li- the, the, the ability to dodge the li- liability, of anything that happens, but it shows that you're committed. You're committed to the industry. Yeah, industry. Yeah. You're not just one of these mo- momos that are just trying to make a bunch of money in this business. You're in it for the long haul. You're in it and you're committed. And uh, it, 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 to me, it's definitely worth it. And even Hurricane um, Michael, Hurricane Michael, second day in. I, I It's the second day in. I'm expecting to make a bunch of money off all these houses that are just devastated. What happens on like my first or second claim of the day? I'm in a rush and I don't know how this happened. I got videos of it on my Facebook. I don't know how it happened, but single story ranch, slab house. I set my 11 foot ladder up. I go to get up, Matt, and I'm, I go to take my shingle gauge photo. I realize I don't have my shingle gauge in my pocket. I'm like, got to go back to the truck and get it. I'm on the last rung of the ladder. I'm, I'm, I'm no more than tw- 12, 16 inches from the ground. I jump off, do like a little turn, like got to get to my truck, and I break my foot. Oh. 12, in- 12 inches from the ground. As soon as the, uh, you know, the, uh, it was my left foot and the side where my pinky toe is. Soon as that just hit the ground, pop, broke. I hit the ground, scraped my knee. The insured comes outside. They're like, is everything okay? And I just straight up said, I think I broke my foot. Never broke a, bo- uh, a bone in my body. And they're like, are you okay? And I'm like, yeah, I think I'm fine. 
And I went to my truck and I sat there and I put my head down and immediately the adrenaline started to slow down and the blood rushed up. And I'm like, needless to say, I'm a professional. I got back out there. I get on the middle roof. I finish my inspection. I do the whole thing. The, <laughs> and, With a big old uh, but, balloon on you <laughs> coming out of the top of your Yeah, face. I was in, I was in <laughs> terrible shape. Oh, man. But at that at that moment, it's good to say that at that moment, I did not carry workers' comp insurance. So everything went to my personal health insurance. So after that was exhausted, I still ended up paying a couple thousand dollars in the end between, you know, everything. A couple thousand dollars in the end. That would have been taking. And I had I had workers' comp. Or no, I only had workers' comp shortly after that. But all of that could have been taken care of if I would have just spent a couple extra bucks a month on yeah. workers' comp insurance. So and that's why, so especially if you're doing property field claims, getting on roofs is worth it. Right, yeah, thanks. for sure. So this Chris. thing is, is that your your uh, insurance is about transferal of a risk. That's any insurance that you buy. Yeah. You are saying to it, another company will say, pay me a monthly fee and I'll take on this risk for you. That's it. That's all it is. So when you make decisions about whether or not you're going to do that, it's up to you. It's, it's transferal of risk, what you are comfortable with.